Hi, thanks for joining us for The Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. I'm Chris Cooper. It is time to plant vegetable seeds. Today we're going to plant beans, squash, melons, and okra. Also, aerating your lawn can help nutrients, water, and air reach the grass roots. Today we will show you how to do it. That's just ahead on The Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. Production funding for The Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South is provided by Goodwinds Landscape and Garden Center in Germantown since 1943 and continuing to offer its plants for successful gardening with seven greenhouses and three acres of plants plus comprehensive landscape services. International Paper Foundation. The WKNO Production Fund. The WKNO Endowment Fund. And by viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to The Family Plot, I'm Chris Cooper. Joining me today is Mike Dennison. Mr. D is a retired Extension County Director, and Booger T. Lee will be joining us later to show us how to aerate our lawn. All right, Mr. D, we're planting seeds. I think all danger of frost is past. <laughs> I think it's gone I don't gone think now. we have to worry about it. I don't think so. Okay, we're planting this uh, vegetables in this raised bed, and it's a little different from planting it in a garden. Mm -hmm. You, in your office, you've got a real good vegetable planting guide the state of Tennessee has developed and it tells you how far apart to space plants, yes, sir. how deep to plant them and things like that. Uh, we're going to have to put them a little closer here than we okay. would normally do in a big garden. Let's, uh, to try to organize this, let's uh, measure how much room we've got here and try to split this into about four different uh, areas. And we're, looks like we're about, it's 19 feet three inches is what it is. Okay. So that's, we're going to call that we're going to call that 20 feet. So we're going to we're going to we're going to split it into four different areas. So it's going to be about start from this end because it's easier. Yeah, it'd be a lot easier. Mm -hmm. 20 feet would be. A... How about that? That looked right. pretty close to pretty close to even. Okay, an average rule of thumb on planting seeds is to plant them, as far as the depth is concerned, is plant them about four times the diameter of the seed. Okay. So for large seed like corn and beans and things like that, you'll probably end up planting them about an inch deep. Uh, some of the real small seed, turnips and things like that, you'll only plant maybe a quarter of an inch deep. Okay. Uh, it's very important to try to have good soil to seed contact. So we're gonna start by planting some cantaloupes here. Our melons. And, All right. right, the melon. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to come in, I'm going to plant, looks like I've got room for one, two, maybe three. Uh, I'm going to try to plant them uh, th hills mm -hmm. with about four or five, maybe six plants okay. in it, and plant them about a foot apart is what I'm going to try to do here. Right. I'm going to come in here, I'm about a foot from each side here. And I'm not going to dig a very deep hole because these are these seeds only need to be planted about an inch deep. I'm going to open that hole up right here, and I'm going to come back, and I'm going to do the same thing right here. I'm about still about a foot away. Open me a little hole right there, and then I'm going to come over here about a foot and do the same thing. Okay, now we have six holes, which will be six hills of 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 cantaloupe plants and if all of these seeds come up they're going to be way way too thick <laughs> way, way too, too thick. thick I may let you help me here I'm gonna I want to shake them out of here I'll let you hold that for okay, me okay you can do that okay I'm gonna to try to put like half a dozen seed in this first hole that's one two three four Five. I think five is enough. That's a lot of seed. I'm gonna do come back to this other hole and do the same thing. Oh, it looks like you have later on. Enough. If all of these come up, like I said, we're gonna have way too many plants, oh, yeah. and we'll need to come back and probably thin them to only one plant per hill. Now, like I said, I, these seed are pretty small, so I'm probably only gonna to try to get about a half inch of soil on top of them, and I'm just gonna use my trowel here and just kind of. 
Just lightly cover lightly it up. Lightly cover it up. Mm -hmm. Try to keep, kind of keep the clods out. And now that I've done that, get that out of the way, I'm going to grab my rake over here and I'm going to try to firm it up just a little bit. And I'm just going to kind of do this number. Okay. That will just firm up your seed bed a little bit. And you notice that I'm going over the whole area here because I'm mm -hmm. not real sure where those hills are. <laughs> Hopefully if they all come up, we'll know where they are. <laughs> so next we've got cucumber. Oh, cucumber. Cucumber. Okay, so I've got, I'm gonna go between here okay. and I'm gonna do about the same thing because these running plants will take up about the same amount of space. So I'm gonna, I've got an imaginary line running down through here. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna come out about a foot from my line and a foot from there, and we're gonna do the same thing we did. I'm just gonna open up me a little hole here. One, two, three, four, five. Cover them up here a little bit. The thing I do with the rake is probably more valuable than about anything I'm doing here. And the way we figured that out is when we plant forages, we noticed that the seed would come up quicker in the tractor tires where the tractor you know, ran over oh, and, okay. and compacted the soil than, okay. than in the other area. So just a good idea to, and, and the, the implement the farmers use is called a cult packer. And many of the planters have a press wheel on the back of the planter, yeah. which will do the same thing. It'll go ahead and press it down, you know, on, uh, as part of yeah, the planting process. All right, what's next? All right. How about watermelon? Watermelon. How about All that? right. What, what variety is that? Jubilee. Jubilee. That is a good, good variety. They yeah. grow that commercially down in Alabama and have okay. for a number of years. These probably are a little bit larger seeds, so I may have uh, to plant are. just a little bit deeper. I may go for three quarters of an inch here. And how many seeds are you going to put per? Uh, let's go with only four of these, four. I think. Now, if you come out here in the summer and you eat watermelons, these are not seedless. <laughs> I'm going for about three quarters of an inch here. All right. What's our last trailing This was plant? left. Squash. Squash. Crook, yellow crook neck? Straight, straight neck. neck. Straight neck. Straight okay. neck. Okay, well, that'll work. This should be about the same size as the, uh, as the, uh, Cucumbers and everything, shouldn't it? No, it's more like the watermelon. How about that? Pretty good size seed. Pretty big seed. Mm -hmm. So we'll do the same thing. We'll shoot for about three quarters of an inch deep. Okay. These two. Okay. My line. Gotta be on the lookout for Mr. Squash Vine Bore with these oh, things. Yeah. One, two. Three, four. And and the reason we planted all of those trailing vegetable plants on that side of this bed is because we know they're going to run and we know they're not all going to be contained in the bed. And we don't want them running over here in our Bermuda grass lawn. We want to keep them over in the, the uh, garden area, the raised bed area. And we have gravel over here in between these beds and it'll be okay if they run out there because we're not going to be running a lot more over sure. there. Yeah. Yeah. Other plants that we're going to plant that are upright growing, we've got some okra and some snap beans. I'm thinking about how we want this thing to look. And, and, and okra is a much taller growing plant than, uh, mm -hmm. than snap beans. And I'm thinking we might want to put a couple of rows of okra and say start them here and go to here. Mm. And then on both ends put snap beans. What do you think about that? I like that. That okay. way it'll be... I like that. Have a little symmetry to it uh -huh. 10 to 12 inches apart is, is recommended spacing on okra I'm going to run the rows like this do a bunch of little short rows okay okra seeds pretty small isn't it yeah they're pretty small so I really only need about a half inch over these or a little less and how uh, many are you going to put per oh, let's do with three four let's go with four One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two. It is going to very, be very important to thin these out. I'm going to go to my antique hoe. I'm getting tired of bending over. <laughs> How about that? 
Yeah, it's really good for this kind of stuff. And if you're do, doing long rows, you can use one side of it to dig a trench. It's really handy. Okay. All right. Let's do the same thing on firming it up. You know, it would be good to have those little labels that you can stick <laughs> in the ground, but I think we can identify the oh, plants. Once they start coming up, up we know what they are. And the seed are fresh, they should be really good. Now, if you're using seed from, from last year that you stored in a freezer, you may want to up your seeding rate a little bit. Okay. All right. Snap beans. Snap beans. We can put them like four inches apart. So let, right. me, let me dig. What I'm going to do is do some trenches like this. Those beans are a little bigger, so they need to be about an inch deep, I think. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put them about four inches apart. Okay. And these also will, will probably need to be thin. Same thing, firm it up. Firm it up. That ought to do it. All right. Don't we'll, take long to plant seed. Not long at all. That was good. Yeah. And we just do the same thing on the other side. On the other side, mm -hmm. right. Same thing on the other side with the snap beans. All right, Mr. Dude, we definitely appreciate that. Good and deal. again, we'll see how well your germination rate We'll comes. see how my germination <laughs> rate comes. There are a number of gardening events going on in the next couple of weeks. Here are just a few that might interest you. All right, Brooke, we are here. We actually have an aerator. Yeah, aerator. We're going to aerate our lawn. So why do we need to aerate anyway? Because over a period of time, your soil gets compacted sometimes. And that means water, fertilizer, and not getting down to the root system. Okay. And the, over a period of time, that's, that's, that's going to happen. Especially you got a lot of traffic on your lawn, no kid playing on it, you cutting it, mowing across it, walking across it. Mm -hmm. And then you, you need to aerate it sometimes. And the aerator is going to loosen the soil up. Okay. For that water can get through the soil, it can move through the soil when it rains, the fertilizer can get down to the root system. Mm -hmm. You want all that to happen to your soil, to your grass. If not, whenever you put fertilizer in, it just don't stay on top. It's not going to be get down to the root system. So you want to loosen that soil up some. And you got moody grass and you got fescue grass. You got a warm season grass and you got a cool season grass. And the best time to do that is your warm season grass when the grass begin to come out of dormancy. Okay. And this probably in last of April or the first of May. Okay. It is not too hot because once you aerate it, you expose no root system right. to, the, to the heat. So you don't want to do that to it now. So okay. If it's real hot and you do it, then you might need to water it in or something. You need to water it because those root system will dry out. Okay. And for fescue lawn, you want to do that probably in September when mm -hmm. that grass begins to grow. So you don't want to do it in the winter month when it's going dormancy. You don't want to do Bermuda grass in September. Because if it's dormancy and it's not doing any growth, and those roots will be exposed all one alone, that could damage your grass. Sure. Mm -hmm. Sure. So this is a good time. You no, know, it's not too hot now. It, you know, it's probably get some rain and something. You don't need to water it in. And that's for nutrient can pass through the soil. So we need to aerate it. Probably, um, depending on how many traps you have in your lawn, maybe four or five years, four or five years, depending on okay. how you trap So it's not that often. Not that often you, 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 you aerate. You know, then you got somebody out there doing something all the time that's playing football or whatever you're doing right. on your lawn or something like that, and having a compact soil. And that's why with TFO don't mow your grass uh, when it's real wet, because when you're wet, it'll damp a lot. You can you you, 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 you compact the soil down, mm -hmm. so you don't want to do it then. So okay. you want to you want to make sure that uh, when you cut your grass and everything, it kind kind of, kind of dry. Okay. And no, you know, that's one thing you want to do that. So this is just an aerator here. I know it's a good thing. That, and what the aerator do? It, it punches holes into the soil. Okay. You know you go up and down, you, you go cross, and you get a good coverage on there. For that, for that water and stuff and pass through the soil. Okay, so it pulls the plugs out. So we can leave the plugs you on the ground? You can leave the plugs on the ground. Okay. You leave them, you don't worry about putting them in the thing there. You just leave, okay. them, leave them on the ground, and over a period of time, if it, if it, they'll break out. Okay. And they, 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 they'll come back and be built into your soil. And aeration is something that works, because you said you did it in your I own I did, yard, man, right? a couple of years ago, and I could see the difference in that grass that, that year, and it just came out so pretty and everything. Because when I saw a real compact, I had been in the house alone for uh, over 20 years, and I said, I need to do something to my grass. It just wasn't, wasn't doing good. Okay. <laughs> and I, just, I need to do something to it. And I said, let, let me aerate it. And, and, and I did that, and it really helped. You know, and if you've been in your own house for a while, you got compact soil, and you see the water and thing not like getting down to it like it should, it don't look like you should look, 
Air rating. Air rating. Okay. Uh -huh. and, and this and, and, and no, like I said, you have a Moody grad, you want to do it probably right the first of April. I mean, first, last of April or the first of May. Okay. And, and best school in September. Okay. And the grads are recovered from, of course, the aeration itself. Yeah, that's why I say you want to do no it. Problem. That's why I say you want to do it when it begins to grow. Oh, you know, okay. you want to begin to grow. So you don't want to do it in so a recover. It recover quick, yeah. yeah. Recover in there and stuff in there. And I wouldn't do it on a real, real hot day, you know, like you know, in there. So I wouldn't do it then. Okay. Then, if I do, you need to make sure that you water it in because you don't want to spoil those roosters right there because they, they could dry out. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, Brooke. Yeah, you so want to do it? You want to show me a show for I do it and how I look and everything in there. Cause when I was doing last time, they were pulling me down the thing. Okay. <laughs> you know, you be, very, be very careful when you're doing that. So uh, okay. we don't, we don't, we don't go and do that and show you how to do them. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. What do you think? Man, it's good. To tell you, do it when do it with a clip. Do it when it do it. Not too hot. <laughs> but it's good, though. What, what you need to do. Okay. You see how going up and down? Mm -hmm. Just like mowing your grass. Make sure I try to cover every spot in there. So, and this is going to hit the grass a lot better. You'll see it again next year. This year, you'll see how it grow real good. Okay. Average is very, very important. Okay, yeah, and we can see the little plugs. That see the little plugs that come out of the ground and everything. So, going through that. If you want to do it real good, you can go back across another way. Okay. That will help some too. But this, this should be good enough. Just one way should be okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, Brooke, again, so how often do we need to do this? Probably about, you know, every three or four years, depending on how many traffic you have on your lawn. You know, uh, what I would do there, I would just look at my soil and see how the water begin to, is it doing anything? The water begin to penetrate to the soil. Okay. And you would then just look at this grass. You know, you can tell when it's come back or not. When it rain, water kind of stand for a while. Right. Also, that when you're adding fertilizer to it and your grass not doing anything, it might just be standing on top of the soil and not getting down to the root system. So you can tell that when you do that. So this, this is a good thing uh, to do aeration. Air, air I like, okay. I like doing it. And and and, and it's and it, good. And it's good. good for the grass because good of what? for the grass now. Yeah, let, let water and air move to the soil and also get fertilized down to it. And I, and that's, you need that because grass need to breathe too. Okay. So roots <laughs> need some air, and that's why, that's why we do aeration. Okay. Uh, average soil and everything. So, and like like I said again now, Bermuda grass you want to do it probably about the April, the last of April to the between May. And fescue grass is a cool season grass. You want to do it when that grass begin to grow. And fescue being sometime in September. All right, mm -hmm. well, we appreciate that demonstration. Oh, good. <laughs> All right, so this is Roundup in the Tank, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna kill all of this Bermuda grass that's in our flower beds. Uh, we definitely don't want the Bermuda grass here. Um, what I'm gonna do is just go around the perimeter here, spray a little bit there. Okay. You know, Bermuda is a creeper. Right. It has rhizomes and stolons. And if you're not careful, I always like to tell people it likes to go for those flower beds and those garden beds. And you want to make sure you get good coverage when you're doing it. Be careful not to apply on a very windy day. This will knock out your grass weeds and a lot of your broad leaf weeds as well. All right, folks, there you have it. Round up, kill your Bermuda grass and also your broad leaf weeds. All right, this is our Q&A session. And Booker, you jump in there with us, all right? I do that. Okay, here's our first viewer email. I have a garden plot that was a farmer's field years back. The ground grows great tomatoes, peas, and okra, and other above ground crops. I cannot get any in-ground veggies to grow, beets, onions, carrots, and turnips. The greenery grows, but the veggies don't. The ground tills up fine, but then it turns hard as a rock. How do I amend my soil to make it easier for my plants to grow? Have tried chicken manure, horse manure, etc., and it is still hard and this is Miss Beth in Cleveland. Booker, it is still hard if she tried all of that. So what well, do you think? Well she might just start doing some uh, uh, compost bin and add some good nutrient in there and try to break it up some. And also when you got the underground crop to grow, 
it could be like potassium low in deficiency because uh, it's above crop growing good. Sometimes your root crop, they need a more phosphorus potassium. Mm -hmm. So she might want to check a soil pH and also start adding organic material to her soil when it, it go back together real fast. That could be some of the problem, compact soil. Okay, Mr. Day. I agree with that. Uh, also gypsum is a product, uh, okay. calcium sulfate, that will open up, tend to open up the soil. You may mm -hmm. want to try that as a soil amendment in addition to, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, any compost, pine bark, anything that can kind of open it up a little bit. But, you know, if you're doing a good job with tomatoes and <laughs> yeah, peas and beans yeah, and all that kind of stuff, you know. That's you, good, ain't it? Yeah, that is yeah. really good. I, yeah. I wouldn't do a whole lot in the area where you're growing those sure. if that's working. Now they're sure. doing okay already. So yeah. Want to start to be, that. yeah, she said, indicated they were doing that actually yeah, pretty so. good. What about this book? What about a soil test? You think that'll help out? You do a soil test and the soil test will tell her what you need to add to the soil, especially the soil pH. Now the mm -hmm. soil pH is off counter, that might be some problem too. Your, your other nutrients got tied up in the soil mm -hmm. and it might not be used up by the plant. So okay. you might want to do that too, just to see. And uh, what is seven dollars per box? Seven dollars <laughs> per box. box. Well spent. <laughs> you well worth it. it. May just be that Cleveland soil over there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here's that next viewer email. For the last two years, my squash plants had blooms, and they were growing squash, but then they died from the bottom of the plant up. Why did this happen, and how can I prevent this this year? Uh, this is from Miss Linda. So the squash plant, <laughs> they had the blooms. They had the blooms. They were growing, but then the plant died from the bottom up, Mr. D. And I see you thinking over here. Didn't, didn't, didn't we have some that did that I out in the backyard like last that. year? Yeah, uh, I, I believe I believe it's probably a squash vine borer. That's what I believe. It's probably okay. what the problem is, and, mm -hmm. and you can you can tell, especially if you look down at the base of the plant, and there's some frass coming out, uh, and 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 just really trashy looking mm -hmm. junk coming out of the trunk close to the the soil line then you probably have a squash vine board. And if, if that's the case, if you're at that point, it's too late to do it. <laughs> too late, too late. Uh, if, uh, if you've had a history of a problem with that, then, then probably right about now, you ought to start spraying a, a pesticide out there like once every seven days. Mm -hmm. uh, Carbaryl, bifenthrin, esfenvalerate, and permethrin are three product, uh, four products mm -hmm. that are recommended in the Red Book, the UT mm -hmm. Red Book. Uh, be sure you, that you direct your sprays to the base of the plant because that's where the, the uh, moth is going to mm -hmm. lay her eggs and, and that hopefully will prevent you from having a, another infection like that. How far would you need to spray the plant, you think? Uh, you know, six, probably, probably uh, one or two feet. You know, mm -hmm. if you've got a big squash plant, you don't have to get out there where the fruit are okay. uh, and with these products, but, but uh, I don't think I've seen one, uh, a boar go in you know, much over 12 inches from the soil line. Okay. Most of them are right there within three or four inches yeah. of the soil line. This is where you, where they go into the plant. Okay. All right, mm -hmm. good deal. There you have it, Miss Linda. All right, and here's our next uh, viewer email. How do you get rid of squash bugs? They were a huge problem in my garden last year. Mr. D, squash bugs. It seems <laughs> to be a huge problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. And three of the products that I just mentioned, yeah. uh, you know, and this is something that you wouldn't do on a preventative basis. You wait until you see the bugs okay. are there and That's use good. either bifenthrin, esfenvalerate, or permethrin. Those are three products that you can use. Uh, the, they, they, can, they do a lot of damage, yes, but they, the larvae and the adults feed on the plant. They have piercing sucking mm -hmm. mouth parts and they suck the juices out of the plant and they can do a lot of damage to the plant. But they also uh, have been discovered there's a relatively new disease called uh, yellow vine decline okay. and uh, we, we are pretty sure the squash bug is a vector okay. of that disease so it's probably a good idea to try to control them if you can. Okay, okay. and one thing I like to mention too, uh, flip the leaves over because you actually see their eggs. They look oh, like yeah. little brunts, Footballs. Little, little company you know, footballs. They usually come in a group of 12 or more, but they look just like little bronze okay. footballs. And if you pull that leaf off and destroy it, you know, you, you might help. You do a little might help something, like yeah, that, yeah. but it's, squash plants got a lot of leaves. Yes, man, and they're rough. So, and the thing, too, I like to mention, look, practice good sanitation. Yeah. Rotate the vegetables. Right? I tell people to rotate the vegetables in the garden mm -hmm. each year and don't try to put them in the same place. Because some disease or some insect might not get in the same plant that, like, squash band board might not get on corn or something there. So you might want to do that, might rotate the vegetable in your garden, okay. as sure if you can, so we always do that. Right, so crop rotation, crop rotation yeah. practice, yeah. good sanitation. Yeah, good sanitation. Right, yeah. mm -hmm. and inspection. Inspection, that's yeah, You better get out there and scout. Yeah. Better scout. be on your toes. <laughs> yeah, you gotta be right. on your toes. All right, Booker, Mr. D, we're out of time, thanks for being here. Thank you. Remember, 
We love to hear from you. Send us an email or letter. The email address is familyplot at wkno.org and the mailing address is familyplot 7151 Cherry Farms Road, Cordova, Tennessee 38016. Or you can go online to familyplotgarden.com. That's all we have time for today. To get more information on seed planting, lawn care, or anything else we talked about on today's show, go to familyplotgarden.com. Thanks for watching. I'm Chris Cooper. Be sure to join us next week for the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. Be safe. Production funding for the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South is provided by Goodwin's Landscape and Garden Center in Germantown since 1943 and continuing to offer its plants for successful gardening with seven greenhouses and three acres of plants plus comprehensive landscape services. International Paper Foundation The WKNO Production Fund The WKNO Endowment Fund and by viewers like you. Thank you.